I guess sort of the big part of current affairs right now is, is our, are we doing what we need to do to be prepared? That's the key right now. Is Next Move Group has launched, um, since I've last done the news, is we now have a jobs board. Yes, you can go to our website and see numerous jobs from around the nation in the Chamber Economic Development, even some nonprofit jobs on there. France-based Time Bicycles, a leading carbon fiber bicycle manufacturer, announced their plans to establish a carbon fiber bicycle factory in Spartanburg County, South Carolina. This project is a $6.5 million capital investment and is expected to create 105 new jobs. Next Move Group, the voice of economic development. Hello and welcome to the Economic Development Newscast. I am your host, Chuck Sexton, CEO of Next Move Group. One of the big things that we're seeing right now is real estate issues. Reuters had an article just this past week uh, that said the U.S. manufacturing boom has a real estate problem. And it does. We agree with that. Uh, now, the article talks about mega sites specifically, but you know we're seeing that on the just normal everyday industrial parks and industrial sites out there right now as well. And some of this has to do with you know maybe the sites don't have all the due diligence prepared and, and maybe they don't have all the utilities at those sites because there's been a lot of project activity the last couple of years. And all of these good sites, everything that was more prepared and ready, shovel ready, build ready, has all been taken up. Now, a lot of states are working on those issues. I actually had a, a conversation with a state this morning, and uh, they were talking about money that they're putting towards mega site development, as well to, as towards regular product development in communities and also infrastructure. I think that's a very good thing being proactive. We've seen a lot of states do that. West Virginia, uh, Kentucky, Virginia, uh, Indiana, um, North Carolina, uh, several states are making sure to get their product development dollars into the hands of the locals. One of the other things that's a part of that article, this Reuters article I'm talking about, it's U.S. manufacturing boom has a real estate problem. I shared it on my LinkedIn. I, I encourage you to go take a look at it because, you know, I asked in that LinkedIn post, are you seeing the issues in your normal everyday industrial sites? But D.D. Caldwell from Global Location Strategies is quoted in there, and it's in a, in a section a little lower in that article. But her point is that there's also a power problem in the U.S. We shut down a lot of coal-fired power plants. So the capacity isn't quite there for what's needed for these large projects. And we're seeing that. Uh, a lot of these big projects are wanting hundreds of megawatts. We have a project out there right now. The RFIs are coming in today, as a matter of fact. And they need 75 megawatts within 18 months for this particular project. And there's not a lot of sites out there for that. So one of the other things that we're seeing is there are power companies who are working with their states, you know, state legislatures, on having the ability to move forward with uh, that transmission infrastructure and power infrastructure towards sites without having a project. You know, there are certain rules as to what power companies can do as they build these things out. And so I know there are some power companies who are doing that. I think that's a very good thing. So I guess sort of the big part of current affairs right now is, is are, are we doing what we need to do to be prepared? That's the key right now is preparation is going to bring opportunity in the future for communities. And that's around site development. That's around your strategic planning and things that you need to be doing within your community. So we encourage you. And if you want to reach out to us and pick our brains for advice, feel free to do so. We're doing a lot of site identification analysis for communities right now. Uh, and it's not just identifying sites for communities who maybe don't have an industrial park or industrial site. We also have communities who are reaching out to us and saying, hey, you know, we're filling out RFIs. We know our industrial real estate's not quite up to snuff. And so can you come in and assess that for us? That's our fatal flaw analysis, which we can do as well. On the strategic planning front, we're doing strategic planning in multiple states right now for not just uh, economic development organizations and communities. We're also doing those for power companies in their territories. And so that's another piece. I, if you're interested in that, please reach out to us uh, as well. A lot of executive searches going on right now. Alex is going to be here in just a little bit to talk about the different executive searches that we have going on. Uh, since our last newscast, I, I think it's been since our last newscast, we started a new jobs board. And, uh, you know, not every community can pay a lot of money for an exec full executive search service, or you may not want to do an executive search for, say, a number two or number three. Uh, our jobs board gives a bit of an advantage uh, to you by posting your jobs on that because we blast that out to our membership and all those folks who, who get our emails. And that's about 40,000 professionals nationwide uh, every week. And so if that's something you want to increase the audience and the folks that are seeing the jobs that are out there, make sure to reach out to us or you can go onto our jobs board. Just click a button, 
sends us a, sends us an email. So uh, a few other things that we have going on as a company right now. We are continuing to move forward with housing study because housing is a huge issue right now across the country. And we put out there just a few weeks ago that we have the capability to not only do the housing study piece, we also have the ability to uh, give you strategies around housing because that's kind of how this came about. We were doing strategic planning, had strategies around housing, and then part of those strategies were, hey, you need to have a housing study done to understand what your needs are as a community to go out and attract these developers. Well, community started asking us to do housing studies, and now that's something that we offer. And there's huge interest in that right now. So that's a new product offering that we have as a company. It is springtime. I'm excited about springtime. The Keeneland horse races are going on right now. I actually just placed a bet on my betting app because there's a long shot and there's a really good jockey on this race five right now. And I'm, I'm hoping that I win. So uh, that's my favorite time of year. It's the time of year that I want to get out there, go watch those horses race, lose some money, uh, and go and check out some bourbon distilleries. And I checked one out not too long ago in Bardstown, Kentucky, and I'd never been to it before. I don't know why I hadn't been to it before. Heaven Hill. That's a great one to go to. You don't even, even if you don't have a VIP tour, which those are hard to get right now when you have to sign up for those online. So if you're visiting Kentucky, make sure and check out Heaven Hill over in Bardstown. It's one that I think you'd like. You get to taste all their bourbons in a special bar they have upstairs. So if you've never experienced their bourbons before, you don't have to have a tour to taste those. You can go up to their bar and taste any of them you want. You get different flights of bourbons. It's a really cool experience. The reason I'm saying that is because I am being inundated with folks from all these different states who are saying, we're going to come up and we're going to go into Kentucky and we want some advice on where we need to go. What, what distilleries are the best here and best there? So anytime I get a chance, I'm going to give you some advice on that. I know Chad always loved to give golf advice. And I am not a great golfer. I'm just not. I hit really good shots from time to time, okay? And I'm pretty good chipper, okay? But nowhere near Chad's level, Alex's level especially. He's on another planet when it comes to golf. Now, I know Chad like to give you all golf tips on the newscast. Well, I've got a golf tip for you, actually. Even though I'm not great at golf, I do have a golf tip for you because I just played this past weekend for the first time in six months. And something kind of hit me. He's like, what, what? I wasn't hitting real well. I was like, how can I make my score better? Well, get yourself a really good eraser. That's number one. Um, <laughs> you can change your score. But number two, always keep a nice little bourbon bottle with you. You can get these little minis at any liquor store. I highly suggest as your golf game starts to fall apart, like most of us, just pull one of those out, drink it up and have a good time with your friends. Now, lastly, one thing I want to make sure and put out there, if you all haven't heard, um, Chad's nephew, Lane, is facing a very rare form of cancer. Um, and so Chad's going to be out a lot. So for our movement members, uh, I'll be filling in and doing a lot of our movement content uh, for the time being. He's going to be spending a lot of time in Houston at MD Anderson uh, with Lane. Obviously, I hope that you keep Lane in your thoughts and prayers as this continues forward. But I wanted to mention that, that Chad has also started a GoFundMe fundraising campaign in Lane's honor and to help his family out. And so if you haven't seen that, you can see it on Chad's Facebook. You can see it on our Economic Development Facebook group as well. Or if you can't find it, reach out to me, Chuck at nextmovegroup.com. Until next month, we appreciate you joining us and we hope you have happy hunting out there and getting those jobs and opportunities into your communities. Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the We Are Jobs newscast. This segment 
your next move. This is where we talk about different chamber and economic development jobs open throughout the industry. So uh, been a while since I've done this. Bear with me. One thing that I do want to touch on that Next Move Group has launched um, since I've last done the news is we now have a jobs board. Yes, you can go to our website and see numerous jobs from around the nation in the chamber economic development, even some nonprofit jobs on there. So for anybody that is interested in a position themselves or you know anybody, stay tuned or go look at our jobs board and send anybody our way that you know that might be a good candidate for one of these positions. But first, we're going to talk about a few jobs that Next Move Group is launching or has launched currently. And first, we're going to go to one we launched this week down in Texas. So the B County Texas Chamber of Commerce is looking for a new president CEO. For those of you wondering where B County is, it's kind of just south of uh, San Antonio, between San Antonio and Corpus Christi. Um, we're taking applications until May 19th, so you have a while. But for more information, go to the nextmovegroup.com backslash B. So another job that we have open right now is Forest City, Arkansas Industrial Development Commission. Yes, they're looking for an economic development director. Salary range is going to be from eighty to one hundred and ten thousand. They do have good benefits now, um, so please visit the nextmovegroup.com backslash Forest City. As there's been some jobs, some things in this job profile that have changed. We're taking applications until May fifth. You can reach out to our staff if you have any questions or know anybody that might be interested. And a job that we are launching in the coming days, I will go on to mention is. Uh, Montgomery County Action Council. So this in Kansas, Montgomery County is on the southern border of Kansas, Kansas and Oklahoma, very close to Missouri. So it's kind of southeast Kansas um, applications. They're going to be running for like 30 days. Again, we have not launched this yet. Uh, pay is going to be around 80 to 95,000. They've got a lot of product there. It's a great opportunity. If you know anybody in the Midwest region that wants to get to Kansas, please check that job out. We also have a few Florida jobs um, on the market. One coming very soon, which is the St. Pete EDC. I'm going down to kick that one off next week, so bear with us, but I would say in uh, two or three weeks, definitely by the next time I do this newscast, that will be another opportunity that we have, and we have a few more in the pipeline um, that we might also be launching in the next month. So the uh, executive search side of uh, uh, nationwide, as well as in our business, is really picking up. So if you know of any candidates, please send them our way uh, so we can get in touch with them and see if one of these opportunities might be a good fit. So around the nation, there's some opportunities, not the next move group we're doing, that we did want to highlight. First, we're going to go to Dayton, Ohio. So the president and CEO of Downtown Dayton Partnership. Um, so this is a 175 to 200,000 salary. Uh, they do a lot of development in the special district there. If you want more information, check out the organization, check out the job description. You can go to downtowndayton.org. Out in Arizona. Uh, Navajo County is looking for an economic development director. So this is in the northeastern corner of Arizona. Salary is going to be 100 to 140,000, so another good six-figure paying job. For more information, you can reach out to Marsha Reed with Government Resources. Another Florida opportunity I want to mention is Orlando, Florida. The Orlando Economic Partnership is looking for a VP of Economic Development. So they're going to do a lot of business recruiting. We're in the whole VP department of that great organization. Pay 130 to 140. You'll be living in Orlando, Florida. So please go check out that website for more information. And the last job I would love to touch on is in Virginia. The business development, vice president of business development position is open for the Greater Richmond Partnership in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, this is a very high paying, probably the highest paying job that I'm mentioning tonight. It is $225,000 to $250,000. If you would like to submit, throw a cover letter, references, and resume together, and email the email address that we're going to put up on the screen right now. That's all we've got for you. Again, if you know of anybody, send them our way. If you want any more information on any of these positions, visit those websites. And please go look at our new jobs board that we have launched. There's lots of other opportunities on there um, that I did not go over tonight. So until next month, I will see you all soon. And thank you all for watching. I'm Ivy Stanley, Next Move Group COO. And this is April's Rounding the Bases, where we celebrate economic development project wins from around the country. France-based Time Bicycles, a leading carbon fiber bicycle manufacturer, announced their plans to establish a carbon fiber bicycle factory in Spartanburg County, South Carolina. 
This project is a $6.5 million capital investment and is expected to create 105 new jobs. Canada-based Epsilon Industries, a manufacturer of modular construction systems, plans to open operations in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The manufacturer is expected to begin production in May in their new facility in the Tuscaloosa County Airport Industrial Park. This new location will create 180 new jobs and will be an approximately $3 million new investment. Middle West Spirits, a world-class distillery and award-winning producer of spirits, plans to expand its distillery, operational facilities, and a 14-acre campus in Columbus, Ohio. The project is expected to create 80 jobs over the next three years. The investment includes a new 75,000 square foot distillery, grain recycling center, and a packaging and bottling facility. Software company Interloop plans to expand its Charleston, South Carolina operations with a $100,000 project that is expected to create 32 new jobs over the next five years. Located at the Charleston Tech Center, Interloop's investment will allow the company to create operations and provide additional training programs. Spirits producer Campari Group plans to add a second distillery at its Wild Turkey campus in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. The $161 million project is expected to create 31 new jobs. The new facility will be designed to produce 5 million additional proof gallons of bourbon annually. Avanti Windows and Doors, a leading manufacturer and installer of vinyl windows and door system, will establish its headquarters, manufacturing, and field installation operations in El Mirage, Arizona. The project is expected to create 200 new jobs. The new 303,000 square foot facility will allow the company to continue its industry leading support of its big builder customers throughout the Southwest and beyond in their efforts to build new homes. Duracell Manufacturing will expand its existing battery component manufacturing operations in Cleveland, Tennessee. The $25 million project is expected to create 25 jobs. This expansion will support Duracell's LaGrange, Georgia site by providing strategic battery component supply and allowing the, com the company to meet and exceed its growing North American battery demand. Aerospace manufacturer Pratt & Whitney, a Raytheon Technologies business, plans to establish a new sustainment facility in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The company expects to invest $225 million through 2028. The 840,000 square foot facility will be an expansion of the company's operations near Tinker Air Force Base and will act as a hub for depot operations for all military engines. The investment will consolidate six existing sites, bringing all disciplines into the two locations. If you have any project wins, let us know. We'll feature your project on our next newscast. Until next time.